Having a written legal will is important, but more than half of Aussie adults don't have one. Vision has entered into a partnership with SafeWill, a leading online will writing platform to provide you with an easier and more affordable way to write or update your will. As part of the Vision family, we want you to know about a way that you can write your will for free. Start the process now and complete it at no cost during Leave a Legacy Week from February 26 to March 3rd. See all the details at vision.org.au slash legacy. A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. No doubt you are becoming increasingly familiar with the technological advances of artificial intelligence. So we might be asking, how does AI affect the future of the Christian church? How can we harness the power of AI to create a future that optimizes resources, enhances the ways that we engage with people, and ultimately further the Great Commission and expand the Kingdom of God? AI is permeating every area of life. And even if we're not personally using it, we are being influenced by it. Many will have fears about this new technology, but looking beyond those fears may be a whole new frontier of opportunities for the Christian church. Dr. Nathaniel Castilla is a pastor, a strategist, a futurist, and an emotional intelligence coach. He's also the founding director of Apostolic Churches Alliance and the principal of the Australian School of Ministry. He leads Menorah Church in Perth, and it's our great pleasure to welcome Dr. Nathaniel with us today. Dr. Nathaniel, welcome. Good morning. Uh, pleased to be here. Well, it's our pleasure to have you. That's quite a, a list there. you uh, you got a lot going on in your life. Yeah, I think the Lord's saying to me, Nathaniel, just put one hat on from now on, please. Too many hats. <laughs> Yeah, well, so I'm, I'm trying to find that one single hat now. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I'll leave that between you and God. But, you know, let, let's <laughs> let's look at the AI. You know, someone said to me yesterday, they said, I, I don't know if it's true, if it's an urban myth, that, you know, Elon Musk said that he's worried about AI and, and he's worried about the future. You are a futurist. So tell me, Nathaniel, in your opinion, what does the future look like for all of us in the context of AI? Um, I think this is the probably third big wave of the internet of all things, and um, it's natural to to feel apprehended about it and a little bit scared because it is scary. Technology, when it comes on on the market, is a little bit daunting uh, because it can get in the wrong hands. Also, we can't really get our heads around it. You know, we we need to spend time with it, live with it for a while before we embrace it. Um, Having said that, yes, uh, there are amazing opportunities and those who jump on board and embrace it will make some mistakes, but then they will take uh, the biggest benefits of it as well because they, uh, you know, they experience it firsthand. So it's, um, it's uh, another massive shift in technology as we see it and we have an opportunity to be at the forefront of it. Yeah, I I like that optimism. Uh, I just looked up some stats about America, which is where most of the AI seems to be coming out of at the moment, uh, for job losses. Although it boosts efficiency, AI will come with huge job losses. Stats indicate that 45 million Americans, representing about a quarter of their workforce, risk losing their jobs to AI automation. So worldwide, a billion people might lose their jobs over the next decade due to AI, with 375 million jobs being at an obsolescent risk from AI automation. What what would you say about that? It's real. It's happening. And uh, whether you accept it or not, it's already happening. So yes, people lose their jobs, but there are many opportunities for them to shift in other jobs. Take taxis, uh, you know. 10, 12 years ago when Uber came to town, 15 years ago, it disrupted the taxi industry massively. Now, are there less drivers now in, let's say, in uh, in uh, the ride-sharing uh, industry than there were taxi drivers 15 years ago? 
No, there's three, four times, maybe five times more drivers today because the industry just opened up to a whole new world of opportunities. Before, you only use taxis to get from A to B. Now, with ride-sharing or delivery options, people have embraced this. They don't just use Uber for ride-sharing. You've got Uber Eats, you've got Uber Koreas, you've got all sorts of industries that have opened up. Now, maybe the number of drivers are five times more, so they've actually created five times more jobs than they've taken away from the taxis. Yes, it suffered, the taxi suffered, but then everybody else benefited from it because now if you want, let's say, you're earning, I don't know, let's say $60 an hour, you're a professional, you're on $60 an hour, and uh, you've got meetings all day, you want a good meal, there's only, um, you know, a fast food place around the corner, you can go and grab that in five minutes, or you can get a nice meal delivered by Uber Eats, which costs, let's say, $25 but you haven't wasted a minute of it, you've done it online, uh, that meal comes to you, a nice, fresh, hot meal, and it saved you maybe 40 minutes of driving or going to a place, you know, sitting in a queue, standing in a queue, waiting for that food to be cooked, uh, delivered to your table, you sit down, you eat, before you know it, it's an hour journey, you just lost $60 or another meeting. So it, it, the complexities that comes with it you just realize, hang on, this has made my life easier. This has actually benefited me. A single mom uh, can benefit from this. Somebody who's elderly, somebody, you know, they can get something that they, they this service didn't exist uh, 15 years ago. You could not get that 15 years ago. Yeah, you know, that's you a... had to wait for a courier to pick up a sachet the next day. Now in 20 minutes, they picked it up and, you know, it's instant. You know, within half an hour, it's at its destination for a mere $15. Yeah, great example. And again, love your optimism because I think like anything that's new in this world, we can view it with a negative lens or with a positive lens. I mean, I mean another angle on this is a guy called Jeffrey Hinton who was one of Google's top artificial intelligence scientists has recently come out. He's also left Google. He's known as the godfather of AI. And he said this, the idea that this stuff could actually get smarter than people he said, I thought was way off. Obviously, I no longer think that. So he's expressing concerns that uh, the future may be something like uh, the old movie, The Terminator, with uh, you know robots built like Arnold Schwarzenegger hunting us down, <laughs> which I don't know about you, uh, you know, Nathaniel, I'm a bit tired for that. I don't think I'm up for that battle. Well, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, I think the potential is massive. Yes, they can build machines, they can build robots, they can build... Um, the technology has evolved radically. You've got to understand that over 90% of all the data that is available online at this stage was uploaded in the last two and a half, three years. Over 90%. So everything we've done to about 2021 equates to about 8 to 9% of all the data available online. So the knowledge has exponentially gone up to such a fast rate and it's going to such a fast rate that it is beyond us at this stage. Yes, this, I mean, it's biblical. The knowledge will increase immensely. And in the wrong hands, it can cause uh, huge problems. But we have to view it as a tool. And there will be some parameters and there will be some boundaries there. And it's open to, to um, you know, to, to be taken for granted and people will take advantage of it. But I feel that the smartphone today that we use is far worse. The actual tool of the smartphone is far worse than AI because it has gripped people. It has gripped, uh, it has caused so much more damage, let's say, good and damage at the same time than AI will probably in the, in the next few years. Uh, and it's going to take years for us to, I mean, children at school today, they learn how to manage their devices. Now, our generation never learned that. So we, you know, if you look at our screen time, it probably equates to about three, four hours a day, which is absolutely shocking, you know, for a 40, 50 year old to spend three, four hours a day. And we, we, tend to look at the young people and say, oh, they're always on the phone. We are worse than them. 
they're actually educated in how to use the phone. They're, they're educated how to put boundaries. They're educated how to deal with that. We were never educated to do that. So when it comes to AI, again, there will be some boundaries. There will be some education. There will be a process in place that will enable us to manage this and to, to administer this, to, to be good custodians of this technology, wise custodians. And I believe us as, as kingdom people, we should be, as those people in the times of Daniel and the wise uh, people from, from Israel that were taken into Babylonian captivity, 10 times wiser than the Babylonians at being Babylonian. So we should be 10, time, 10 times wiser at using AI than the people who created AI. That's, that's what I want the church to open up to that opportunity. Yeah, it's a, it's a great message. And Nathaniel, I'm not going to give away my age, but I remember being in a meeting in London of all places in the 90s, and a gentleman was talking to a bunch of Christian leaders and pastors and telling us about this new thing called the internet. <laughs> and I remember sitting there thinking, wow, what is that? And, and being an outdoors sort of a person, I was pretty bored after about two minutes. But, you know, looking back on that time, that was also a pivotal moment for the church, wasn't it? That if we were to embrace that new technology, we could use that technology and obviously share the gospel and build the church through the internet, which many are now doing. But obviously many also use the internet and still use it now to corrupt people. And, you know, and obviously pornography, I think, is one of the most popular uses of the internet, sadly. And so I guess AI is the same, isn't it? It's either we can sit back and watch the world use it for bad, or we as God's people can use it for good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you look at the Bible app, right? Greg Rochelle, a live church, uh, you know, 400 million users in the world. When uh, Apple came up with the iPhone, with the smartphone, they were sitting in a meeting and they were saying, you know, we heard Apple is bringing a new phone, which is like a computer in a, in a hand device. And they will have this software it's called apps, they said. And uh, is there anything we can do to tap in this te- new technology? And somebody said, well, let's just put a Bible on it. Can we put a Bible on it? And nobody knew anything. And there was an intern, a 17-year-old intern. He said, how hard can this be? So they said, well, you're hired. You go and build an app with a Bible on it. So within a few weeks, they had the Bible app, you version of Bible. Now, fast forward, you know, 20 years later, and we have, you know, 400 million users it's my daily devotional because somebody said how hard can this be a 17 year old in a meeting an intern who had no capacity no pastoral theological understanding but was just willing to to go for it and expand the kingdom that's why we we benefit from it today so in the same way that's why i'm cautious not to 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 throw away this new te- new technology and say wait or we'll deal with this. I'm thinking the church should jump at it and make the most of it because those who do will benefit immensely from it because they'll be able to expand the kingdom at a fast faster rate. For example, I can create an avatar of myself now in a matter of two hours. I can film myself delivering a message, uh, create an avatar of myself, and then. I can get that avatar to speak it in Chinese. I can load it up to TikTok. I can load it up to Facebook. I can load it and I can share it speaking uh, Mandarin or Cantonese to a world which I've never had the door open to. And that's in a matter of of, uh, something that would have taken me, let's say, months to, to develop, film with cameras, uh, and then, uh, you know, get somebody to translate it, subscript it, or do voiceover, dub it. I mean, the technology is phenomenal. You know, you can speak in any language in the world instantly now, and the lib movement, everything, will do it exactly as that. I mean, you know, the the opportunity is amazing. I mean, I've done cross-cultural missions. I've been to over 100 nations. But now to be able to do it from my car in a matter of minutes... I embrace this. Yeah, it's it's incredible. And just thinking about that 17-year-old in America, and yeah, God bless America. I mean, how many good things have come out of America? But you know, years ago, a 17-year-old who wanted to serve God might have become a youth leader and maybe had 20 or 30 teenagers that you know he or she was 
ministering to and feeling really buzzed about that. And that 17-year-old has literally impacted 400 million lives by having a can-do attitude, embracing new technology. And, and God has used that individual to just bring so much blessing. It's amazing, isn't it? Absolutely. It's, it's encouraging and it's uplifting. Uh, take it for example, you know, you go to Google. Obviously, people still go to Google. They, they won't all go to AI. Uh, Google incorporates AI as well. Bing does, so all the search engines do. But for example, you can go to Google and say, let's put in a question. Uh, why, is there suf- why does God allow suffering in the world, for example, right? And you will get a top answer uh, from a reputable apologist somewhere. But then you will get something which is called people also ask. And there's usually four or five questions that people ask, right? So now if you, if you want to expand the kingdom in a very simple way, you take those four questions, you take, take those to chat GPT, and you create an article on those four questions. So those four questions become four answers. You take it back from chat GPT and put it on your website as a blog. Before you know it, Google will give the answer to those people, your very answer. I mean, before you'd have to spend money on advertising with Google to rank up higher. Now you can use Google and chat GPT in a matter of minutes. You could build a hundred, you could write a hundred blogs a day. And, you know, when people search online, your information will come up first because Google will prioritize it because that's what people are looking for. So you actually give people what they're looking for. You don't even have to invent the questions. The questions are given to you. Google gives them to you. That's, you know what I mean? And we, we try how to do outreach and we, we spend time in meetings with coffee and tea and then we go to the board level and then this, get approved to $10,000 tea and this and that. And six months later, we still haven't been outside the, the, the four walls. We're still debating whether should we should do a childcare, where we should do a coffee trailer, where we should do this, this, this. And, you know, the 15-year-old could do... 20, 30 articles like this every morning before school or every night after school and expand the kingdom on a such an exponential level that we, ne- we should populate YouTube, we should populate uh, Google space, we should populate all the internet with the God message, we should permeate every sphere of society with God's message. Yeah. Amen. What a great message. We've had a couple of callers come through, Dr. Netanyahu. So we're going to go to one of those callers now. And I think we have Eve on the line now. Eve, are you there? Yes, I am. What would you like, doc, uh, what would you like to ask Dr. Netanyahu today? Uh, he was talking about um, being able to, to retrieve messages, make a blog and everything in, in a certain time. Now, is all that information... Um, Glean from the internet on information that's already there. Yeah, so you're asking if you want to uh, start blogging and you want to know how to do it in a more effective, efficient way using AI, can you access that information on the internet? Yeah, no, so is it information that you grab from the internet or is it information you add to or, yeah, basically um, okay. what... Rep- what, um, um, reputable yeah. knowledge that we have that it's true. Got you, got you. I think that's a very good question, Eve, because there's dangers with, uh, uh, with the chat GPT and other AI uh, knowledge-based um, sites and uh, bots. Yes, there is a danger in that. So you, you always have to cross-check and make sure that the information it comes out with or the narrative it builds is accurate and it does what it, it's supposed to do. So you can't rely solely on that. But the idea is for you when you uh, connect with ChatGPT is to prompt it to ask it the right questions or to build your narrative and get it to do. It is a tool. It will do what you ask it to do. Yes, it will bring a lot of resources because people upload resources all the time so it learns it learns from the people's questions all the time so as millions and millions of people use it it keeps learning and learning and learning you can actually train you can create your own bot and you can train it to get to understand your own language your own narrative so for example i can load up a book of mine in word 
the text into chat. And I say, after that, I say, in my voice, please uh, write a chapter on why Cain killed Abel. And the important aspect that I want you to focus on is that God already warned him that sin will prowl at his door and he must master it. So the focus on this chapter has to be on how do you master sin? And I want you to write this chapter in my voice now, because I've trained the bot to, uh, to, to write in my voice. So then it will create a chapter with that uh, uh, narrative that I've given it, with those prompts that I've given it, and it will sound exactly like me, like the narrative, the text will sound exactly like my writing. So it has learned my writing my style, the way I structure sentences, and it will do it as if I wrote it. So it learns of me in that moment and it gathers the knowledge that it has from other places and it creates that narrative there. Does that yeah. help? Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that's 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 yeah, I'm just mind boggled with how much technology has has um expanded over the span of forty years, you know, like Crazy. Well, I'm with it's you. Phenomenal. Yeah, You're I'm with you. Eve. The most beautiful era. <laughs> yes. Dr. Natanya's yeah, well, loving it, but I think a lot of us, I'm... yeah, a lot, a lot of us, Eve, are really struggling uh, to to keep up and to catch up. But uh, Eve, I want to thank you so much for calling in. So we've got several callers coming through, so we'll we'll get on to them. But thank you so much for calling in. No worries. Thank you for being there. Excellent. And uh, we've got other calls coming through, Dr. Nathaniel. So I'm going to find another one. His name is Craig, and he's calling from the wonderful state of WA. Craig, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. What would you like to ask Dr. Nathaniel today? How does artificial intelligence save lives? And do you have a personal example of that? And are you afraid that that the, that the powers of darkness, the, the bad guys, get, 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 get a hold of that? Oh, that's it. Okay, so you got that one, Dr. Nathaniel. How does AI yeah. save lives? So uh, in, in many ways, for example, uh, people who go through a very downtime, and that doesn't happen during the day, usually happens in the middle of the night. Uh, they're anxious, depressed. Uh, they can Usually they go to Google and they ask a question. Um, if there are chat or GPTs that are already trained to deal with people that are depressed, people who are uh, suicidal, um, they go to that chat and they say, what can I do if I feel lonely? Now, that chat is already trained to answer questions and come back and have a conversation with that person who is very vulnerable in that moment. Now, that person may not have the strength to call a friend or because it's a you know, midnight hour, he won't do that, but he might jump online and do that and just chat to a bot. Just as we have apps now, in, in the next few months and years, you'll have bots that you can chat on expertise, so on psychology. So in that moment, they can save lives. Uh, AI can read uh, uh, instruments and uh, your heart rate and your, from your devices at a must, much faster rate, and they can process it, and they can trigger, they can call an ambulance, they can do a lot of things pre programmed at a faster pace so let's say you go for a walk and you're prone to falls or you're prone to um uh you know passing out epilepsy uh it can be connected to your uh, uh pulse and it will know if you've fallen if you've if anything has happened to you and call an ambulance instantly and locate you and that device can send the information instantly in real time and they they can check that as well so in many ways, uh, these are just very simple ways, but technology is, is going at such a fast pace that it will be able to help us save many lives, I believe. That's incredible. So the second part of Craig's question too was, have you got an example of that? Are you aware of anyone whose life has been saved through AI helping them in a time of crisis? Well, not directly, but I'm sure even with the example that I said with bots, uh, because people go online all the time and ask questions. These bots. So, for example, if you if you have a heart for people who are, let's say, anxious, and you have a lot of knowledge about that, 
you could build a bot that will answer all those questions, put it in the virtual space, Google will find it. And when somebody says, I want a bot that speaks about uh, anxiety, your bot will pop up. And then they can communicate with that bot. You can train that bot. To create that bot will will take a few days. Yeah, and and I think the third question that Craig asked was, you know, is there a danger or risk that the bad guys will get a hold of AI and and, and use it to to bring harm to people? Absolutely. If you're you're a hammer, everything is a nail, isn't it? Uh, You know, so basically, like any other tool in the wrong hands, it will cause uh, chaos. And yes, there there will be people out there who will use it for uh, evil. Absolutely. Just like they use a knife, they just like they use a car, just like they use any other tool that's out there. It is prone to uh, um, that, you know, uh, evil. Absolutely. Like anything, like you said. And uh, Craig, did you have any other questions you wanted to ask the good doctor today? Yeah, I had one other one. Well, I have Dr. Dr. Nathaniel. Will the bot, will the AI be able, be able to introduce people to Jesus? That is a great question. Will AI introduce people to Jesus? Every tool can introduce people to Jesus. Absolutely. AI is a tool that is trained to do just like Google. Does Google introduce people to Jesus? I'm sure many people do introduce uh, uh, Google is used to introduce people to Jesus. Again, AI will will have a massive effect into how people get uh, to the message of salvation, the message of the kingdom. Absolutely powerful, powerful tool. In fact, you know, the sooner we get on it, the the wider the reach will be for us in in the in the other space. Yeah, Craig. Any other questions? Just one more. How, how, how work? Well, how much does it cost, and where, where, where can we get it? So, Chat GPT, for example, which is probably the most used. There are better ones and newer ones, and there's lots of them out there. Uh, I think there is a, a free version of Chat GPT, um, which is probably Chat GPT three. Uh, but then if you want a paid version there, I think about $40 a month subscription, and then you get, uh, the 4.5, whatever it is now, uh, they're coming up with it, it keep increasing at a, at a very fast rate. There you go, Craig. Hey, Craig, I want to thank you so much for calling in. It's always good to have our callers from WA calling in and, uh, Dr. Natanya is actually you know based where, in you WA. You know where I'm originally from, brother? I'm you sorry? You know I'm originally from? You know where I'm, I'm originally from? Oh, one of the southern states of the U.S.? You got it. You nailed it. Louisiana. Louisiana, beautiful part of the world. Well, Craig, thank you for being a Vision listener, and thank you for calling Dr. Nathaniel today. Thank you very much. Well, we are about to take our break for our national news bulletin, but I just want to remind you that Dr. Nathaniel has written a few books. He wrote a book called 19 COVID Lessons the Church Cannot Ignore. He wrote 40 Years and 40 Days, a practical discipleship book he wrote in 40 days, starting on his 40th birthday. Well done, Dr. Nathaniel. He's also written And the Most Precious Gift, a book for those seeking a first encounter with God. You can find all these resources on his website, which is N-A-T-A-N-E-A-E-L-C-O-S-T-E-A.com. That's N-A-T-A-N-A-E. L-C-O-S-T-E-A dot com. And we have some callers on the line right now. And one of them, uh, Karen from Slacks Creek, has been very, very, very patiently waiting to speak to Dr. Nathaniel. Karen, are you there? Yay. Absolutely. Karen, thank you for your patience. What would you like to ask Dr. Nathaniel today? Uh, A couple of questions, but I would like to make some comments, if I'm allowed. Yeah, you go for it. What's your first question? Let's start with questions. Okay, so what ways will we be aware that um, AI, hang on, being... uh, So, okay, to begin with, AI wants to rewrite the Bible, okay? So in what ways will we be aware, and particularly people who don't know the Bible, who are just coming to Jesus, maybe through AI or a friend, how will we know what's being dished up by AI is real, true, and will affect our flourishing as humans, considering the way that 
uh, education system today for kids are being um, manipulated. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. That's a good question. So, how do we know, Doctor Nathaniel, that the things on AI that are telling people about Jesus and about the Bible? Her question is, how do we know it's true? Well, you study the truth. In every age of history, if you knew the truth, you would survive as a mature Christian. If you don't know the truth, you will fall for every doctrine or every or every sidetrack. So we have to come back to the truth. Yep. So obviously, it's it's on us to so make sure that the Bible that our minds are renewed. Yeah. Yeah, so it's on us to know what the truth is in the Bible and to, like the Bible says, test the spirits and, and test and make sure that what we're hearing is actually true. Yeah, we, we have the mind of Christ if we want to. If we choose to, we can actually tap into the mind of Christ. And when you have the mind of Christ, you can discern what is of Christ and what is not of Christ. And dare I say that the biggest problem in church today is a lack of discernment. We, you know, pastors, leaders... We can't discern what is of Christ and what is not of Christ. And that's why we have the issues that we have in church today. And that's why the issues were there 20 years ago, 100 years ago, 500 years ago. The problem doesn't change. It's just the way it's packed up. Now it's packed up in AI. But it was packed up in communism in my era. I grew up as a Judeo-Christian in Romania, for example. And the Bibles were illegal. They were smuggled. So you couldn't get to the truth as easy as you can get here today. But we got to the truth and we learned the truth. And the communists tried to brainwash us with, with, uh, uh, with everything else that they wanted to drive uh, in, in, in our minds. And in that environment, we still stuck onto the truth. My family uh, and our church and our people, we had a choice to make to study the word of God and to stick to the truth of the Bible. It doesn't change. Yes. I had a conversation with my daughter yesterday uh, about the rainbows and about, you know, uh, all this agenda that is driven at her school. And she's only uh, nine years old. She's only year five. And uh, we had that discussion yesterday. And I said, look, from the beginning, God created a male and female. And I explained to her that, you know, everything else is not of God and people chose evil. And then she said, well, why did Eve and Adam choose to disobey God? We would have been much better off without evil. And I said, well, yeah. And I said, but we disobeyed God, not just them disobeyed God. So, again, it comes back to us to be so grounded in the truth that we can spot anything that is not of the truth, be it AI, whatever AI spits out. You know, when when people, um, like when the forensic police uh, they uh, want to be able to identify fake money. They don't study fake money. They study the original money. They study the $20 note so much so, almost for a year, they just study that bank note. The moment they see or they come across a fake, they can identify it from a mile because they know the original so well. They've studied the original. They're not allowed to touch the fake one for for a full year. That's why... The moment one comes across, they pick it up just like that. So we must be so ingrounded and, you know, entrenched in the word of God that when anything out of it comes our way, be it through AI, be it through Google, be, uh, be it through preachers at the pulpit and online who bring all sorts of nonsense, we can discern and say, well, that's not of God. Yeah, what a great answer. And so obviously AI is a tool but we can't put all of our faith in AI or the internet or any other resource, even a book, like you said, or a preacher, what he or she says. We go back to the Word of God. Fantastic answer. Now, Karen, you also had a comment you wanted to make? Yeah. Um, I was reminded of something, a lovely story I heard on Vision, uh, maybe as I drive around a lot. That's going to stop soon, sadly. <laughs> uh, uh, and you were speaking about a guy or someone was that they had, uh, he was suicidal and he, a woman answered the phone. You might remember the story now. Uh, and uh, she gave him a word and was gently and, you know, whatever. And some time later, a lot later, he um, had a change of heart, didn't do that. And 
uh, actually met the lady and was they got married. It was really was that? Yeah, I'm sure that was on vision. But anyway, be that as it may, I'm what what my concern is is about when someone is depressed and they ring up. You know, sometimes a word of knowledge comes from a spiritual authority that we carry as humans, and AI does not have that. Yeah, absolutely. And look, we we need more people to be active out there than AI. All I'm uh, AI does not replace humans. It shouldn't replace humans. And you know, you don't want an AI by your bedside. <laughs> you want a real human to hold your hand. In fact, yesterday I was seeing somebody in palliative care and this man that doesn't like he's been coming to church for a long time to our church but hasn't truly confessed jesus as the lord mm. and he can hardly speak now and i went to his bedside and just grabbed his arm and held on to his arm and he looked at me turned around and he said god bless you nathaniel yeah and uh I mean, he had a stroke and he, he mumbles. You can't actually understand him. But when he said those words, he could actually speak it out loud. So yeah. that human touch can never be replaced, Karen. And we don't want no. that to be replaced by far. All okay. we're saying here is to harness the capacity of AI to make use of it and to mm. be pioneers in this rather than yeah. laggards. We shouldn't yeah. come to AI 10 years from now and say, what a good tool that was. We should say, uh, let's grab hold of whatever we understand because we won't fully understand it. But even if we understand it in small capacities, apply it and build up content and release content on the Internet as quickly as possible with the kingdom message because it will reach more and more people faster. Yeah, I'm sure the printing press, God used that to spread the word of God. So no doubt he can use this too. Hey, that this is a is Gothenburg 2024. Well done. Yeah, that is a great, great answer, Karen, and uh, and a great statement. I'd like to thank you for calling in today. No worries. Love it. Love vision. Thanks, guys. Okay, God bless. Now, Dr. Natanya, we have another caller who's also been very patient. Chris from Melbourne. Are you there? Yes. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to be a party pooper. I've just... Uh, I'm glad he said uh, we have the mind of Christ because uh, already people will use it for evil. Um, Elon Musk and his neural link, uh, he will make you an artificial being and therefore... Yeah, we've got a shocking line there, Chris. Uh, very difficult to hear. What I'd ask you to do is call us back and we might get a better line and uh, we would love to take your call. And anyone else today, call in now on one 800 316 316 that's 1800 316 316 and if chris in melbourne could call us back please and hopefully we'll get a better line but uh dr nathaniel there's been some good questions today is there any other real key points you want to make today about ai well we see a lot of uh of, like chris has mentioned just picked that up in the noise about Elon Musk saying that this technology has been dead, it should never be released, putting some boundaries into place. And in, in, in a way, I agree with that. Um, it's, it's a bit dangerous. It is a little bit out of uh, control at this stage. Um, but the internet was like that as well. When it first came out, the smartphones were like that. Um, and I think, you know, it will become better and better and guarded. He's, uh, they're also concerned on how it will it can affect uh, humans and medical and the minds of people. Again, it's early days, and we shouldn't throw away the baby with the bathtub. Um, yes, there are dangers, absolutely, as with every new technology. But, you know, sometimes can I say this in a very respectful way. As Christians, we sometimes get carried away in in and create something that is uh, not true yeah. like stories conspiracies we've done that with covid and uh, we've done that with uh, 5g and before that we've done it with y2k and before that we've done it with the internet and before that we've done it with barcodes on uh, on 
uh, you know, on items in the supermarkets. We thought that was the sign of the beast. Uh, you know, every technology has brought an eschatological question mark. Yeah, and, and many people preached against that. Yeah, many people preached against television in the old days. I remember people would refer to it as the television sometimes as well. But uh, God used that for good. Now, I think Chris has come back to us, Dr. Nathaniel. Let's see if we can get Chris on the line now. Chris, are you there? All these things, they're leading up to the final thing, and I believe it's artificial intelligence. They're already going to use it for evil. Uh, Neuralink by Elon Musk, he will make the human an artificial being, uh, and then, you know, you are no longer hearing the voice of God, and it becomes like the abomination of desolation standing in the temple, which is the mark of the beast. So uh, I just want to know what he thinks of that. Yeah, did you hear that full question there, Dr. Nathaniel? Yes, yes, I have. Well, we've been saying Maranatha for whatever period we've been alive. Come, Jesus Christ. Well, then if you want Christ to come, then you should embrace this chapter. If you believe that this is coming to that um, end times, then you should rejoice, and we should all rejoice that we are coming nearer to that end times. And like every other generation before, we wanted to be here when the end comes, when the rapture comes. We want to be in that number to go up first. So if if that is what how you interpret this and how you take uh, this to be, hallelujah, because then uh, we will be going to be with the Lord. For us, nothing changes. No. I, amen. And uh, add to that, I think, Dr. Nathaniel, that we just got to preach the gospel. If you think this is it, this is the, the last thing happening before the Lord comes, he said this gospel must first be preached. So let's get busy and preach the gospel to our neighbors, friends, colleagues, and people we bump into on the street. Yeah, but not because the uh, AI... It creates a doom mentality, but because God is love and wants everybody to be saved. That is the message. If we, uh, if we preach a message of fear of, uh, of uh, end times or fear of uh, AI, then we don't understand the kingdom and we don't understand Christ. We have to preach Christ, crucify, and the kingdom. Even Jesus didn't preach himself. He preached the kingdom of God. He said, I am the door to the kingdom, but he preached the kingdom. So the reason why uh, we don't have much success is because we, we keep preaching something else and not the kingdom of God. Yeah, very good answer. Uh, Steve, uh, Chris, sorry, have you got another question or comment you want to make quickly? We've got another caller waiting as well. I've just got to make a comment on that, quick comment on that. Yes, if we are raptured and the people are left behind, they will remember what we said that that is the mark of the beast and they may not take it and they will, even if they have to be, you know, martyred, they will then enter the kingdom. So uh, end time prophecy is a very important thing. That's all I've got to say. Hey, Chris, I want, to, I want to thank you, Chris, so much for calling in and uh, we value every call and we've got more callers coming through. So we're going to try and get through these calls as quick as we possibly can. And uh, first up, we're going to go to, I think it's Rabinia. Um, forgive me if I've mispronounced your name. Rabini, are you there? No, that's right. <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm quite deaf and I had two radios on this morning so I could hear what you were saying. Um, what happens with hearing aids with this AI? Because in a court case, they could argue that <laughs> you didn't know what you were listening to. <laughs> okay, did you get that, Dr. Natalia? What happens with hearing aids and AI? Yes. Well... It- if, if the technology will help you hear better, it's wonderful. You still got to hear the same thing. It's uh, if if the technology develops to such a degree that it helps you hear better, fantastic. Uh, it, if they if they send the wrong message or the wrong uh, uh, sound, that can happen today with normal hearing aids and with normal information. So again, it's it's just a tool that people use to uh, improve um, that hearing capacity. Hmm. That would be good then. <laughs> I thought oh, I might be hearing I, what, what's really going on. Yeah, that's, I, believe, that's... I believe the medical uh, field will, will have massive developments in the next few years because of this. Thank you. 
Bless well, Rab- you. Rabinia, we want to thank you so much for calling in. We love having people call in. And the phone lines are still open, 1-800-316. If you've got a question about AI, this is your chance to ask an expert in this field. His name is Dr. Nathaniel Castilla, and he's here now. We have Elizabeth from Melbourne. I'm going to try and get a hold of Elizabeth right now. Elizabeth, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. What would you like to ask Dr. Nathaniel? Um, um, my question about the NI, um, my, uh, the NI, I think, uh, it's a good idea, the NI, but, um, uh, in other side, the NI, um, it's not going to give us a big, uh, idea that, uh, to preach about our Bible. Sorry, my English, I am, the English is my third language. So if, I need to preach my Bible, and I got that it's very hard for me that to read the English and understanding the Bible. I go through my language to translate that to English, and then I give the message of God to people who doesn't know what is the Bible mean, that they can understanding what is the meaning of the Bible. So the NI is good idea. But it other other side, the NI is not going to give us the uh, the what, what what we need to preach about our Bible. Yeah, I think what uh, you're saying, Elizabeth, is the AI is good, but it's not all complete, is it? We still need that human element and that human touch, and we need to, like you said, preach the gospel or the the message of God, like you said. And in your case, you need to translate it uh, into your original language to get the meaning. Behind it, Doctor Nathaniel, have you got a comment you want to make about that? Yeah, I think the fact that you can use AI to translate um, instantly, basically, you could you could say the message in your own language, and it will speak it instantly in English. So, if you want to share the gospel with somebody and you can't structure it uh, in the way that you'd like in English, you could say it in your own language, Elizabeth, and uh, this. Uh, any smartphone will do that instantly now through AI or you can if you preach it or if you share it online uh, you can uh, speak it in any language you can share it instantly in any language which is absolutely fantastic imagine you sharing your story uh, speaking it in your native tongue and then uh, AI translates it for you in 50 languages and can distribute it worldwide uh, in you know in a few clicks no no generation before us was able to do that before yeah exactly and then and then this is what i see now is is that is the help of ni like for example i speak three languages i have my own language which is my mother tongue is dinka and then also i have arabic and those all these two languages um they have we have the word of god with those languages so if for example sometime i go to the public for the gym and those things. And then I need to try to preach the word of God while I am at work or I am on my gym. So, and then if I struggle to get that uh, message through, it's English, I just go to my, I go, I go back to my own language. And then I, I, I just like um, get my message directed to that person that they can understand what I'm talking about it. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Out of interest, perfect, where's, perfect, where's, that, yes. where's that original language from? What country of origin are you from? Um, I am original from Sudan. Sudan. And speak, yeah, and I have my language, which is my first language, mother tongue, is Dinka. Yep. And I have Bible in Dinka as well. And I have Arabic, which is, is the national language in, in, our, in our country. And then we have Bible in this uh, language as well, the both language. But I need, if that, that person doesn't speak my language and speak English, I go to see how I'm going to, um, to direct this message that that person can understand what I'm talking about it in, 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 in my language. I go and then amen. go to the English. Yeah, amen. Elizabeth, we've got more callers coming through, but I want to thank you so much for calling in. We love Sudanese callers. I notice you're from Melbourne. Please greet the Sudanese community in Melbourne for, for us and let them all know, too, we have a digital signal now. Melbourne Vision is going across Melbourne digitally, and we would love more and more of the Sudanese community to, uh, to tap into what God is doing through Vision. But, Elizabeth, thank you so much for the call today. 
thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me this chance. You're a blessing. You're a blessing. Dr. Natanya, we've got another caller, and this will probably be our final caller today, and they've been very patient. It's Owen. Owen, are you with us today? Yes. Good morning, doctor. And you, I'm um, just w- worried a bit that um, it's more the journey uh, that people should be enjoying in their daily walk with God more than... You know, some automobiles or EV, whatever. By the way, an EV doesn't make sound, so you can get hit by it a lot easier and they move quicker than a petrol car. But some of these cars are so clever that you can go near the side of the road and, yeah, I don't know whether we're tripping over clever in the field of AI because... God has made it simple, the world, and we're making it far too complex. Yeah, look, that, that, that's, a, that's a really, really good comment. And Dr. Nathaniel, I think that's a really good way to finish up today. It's like, you know, are we getting too clever? Do we think that God just wants us to stay simple? Or once again, do we embrace this new technology? I think this is a great opportunity, Dr. Nathaniel, to, to, to finish up with your final thoughts today. Thanks, Owen. I think what you've touched on is vital. Uh, Going back to a simple life is not a step backwards. It's actually a step forward. We don't need to be concerned too much with AI. It is here. We can embrace parts of it, what we can enjoy, what we can understand. But at the same time, life is so much more than just this technology. And in the simple things, in the everyday, in the human touch, is the biggest blessing in our walk with God in the everyday is the biggest blessing. And this just artificial intelligence is just an aid to help us along the path. But it's not a silver bullet and it won't be the answer to everything. Our answer has been and will always be Jesus Christ. Love you all. Wonderful. And Owen, we want to thank you so much for calling in today as well. Great. Uh, Thank you. Have a blessed uh, 24 and onwards. You too, brother. You too. And Dr. Nathaniel, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. You are literally an encyclopedia when it comes to technology and AI. And I want to commend you for really going there and putting so much time and effort and study into this field because we definitely, the church needs people like you to lead us into this new technology to embrace it in a healthy and a positive way so that God can use all of us in greater ways through technology. Now, I want to remind everybody again, Dr. Nathaniel is the author of several very good books. One of them is called 19 COVID Lessons the Church Cannot Ignore. Another one is called 40 Years and 40 Days. It's a practical discipleship book, discipleship book I should say, he wrote in 40 days, starting on his 40th birthday, which is probably about two days ago, looking at him right now. He doesn't look a day older than 40. And the most precious gift is a book for those seeking a first encounter with God. Now, you can find all these resources on his website, and I'm going to spell it out. It's N-A-T-A-N-A-E-L-C-O-S-T-E-A dot com. That's N-A-T-A-N-A-E-L-C-O-S-T-E-A dot com. Dr. Nathaniel, once again, thank you so much for joining us on 2020 Today. Pleasure. I'm glad to be here. Love what uh, Vision does and the listeners out there. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.